What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Jay Shane. Today, we're going to be talking about all things thyroid. What's up, guys? Jonathan Shane, the Keto Road, a functional nutritional therapy practitioner specializing in metabolic health and women's hormones. Today, we're gonna talk about all things thyroid. So I wanna break, we're gonna break this down in a couple sections. First of all, what is the thyroid? What does it do? We're gonna talk about the benefits of a ketogenic diet and how they impact thyroid. We're gonna talk about when the ketogenic diet can go wrong and we're gonna talk about things that you can do to remedy that. So a lot of layers to shift through here. Super important to understand it all to get a full idea of what your thyroid is doing. And, and, and let me preface up front, this is not gonna answer all your questions. Let me also preface up front, anybody that tells you that they know the thyroid inside and out is lying a little bit. Any thyroid specialist will tell you, anyone that actually specializes in thyroid, which I do not, I specialize in metabolic health, broadly speaking, uh, but anyone that specializes with a like, specific focus in thyroid health will tell you, there's a lot, I mean, we know a lot, but there's a lot we don't know too, right? The thyroid is a very interesting uh, uh, gland and the way that it's um, works with your cells at a mitochondrial level, a Krebs cycle level is, is different. It's very different. So just something to keep in mind, um, as we go forward. Okay. So first of all, what is your thyroid gland? So your thyroid gland is a gland that is very involved in metabolic rate. It's involved in regulating body temperature. It's right. It's involved in stabilizing your endocrine system in general. And there's a bunch of things that are made from it. Things like T3, T4, um, other things. And then when it comes to how your body communicates to the thyroid gland, you have things like TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, et cetera. A lot of people think TSH, for example, thyroid stimulating hormone is produced in your thyroid. It's not, it's produced by your pituitary gland, which is right here right here in your brain and it talks to your adrenals for your what we call your HIPAA axis it talks to your gonads for your hpg axis and it also talks to your thyroid for your, that thyroid um, circuit and so realizing that is just 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 a quick you know it's a free bone take it so we need to look at this and kind of like just so that we don't get too crazy into the nuance of it all we're gonna look at this at tpo tsh t3 t4 help you kind of like look at some things from a blood marker perspective. I'm not a medically licensed doctor here. I just specialize in this from a nutritional therapy perspective. So I just want to state that going forward. So TSH, your pituitary gland produces that to get your thyroid to produce more. So when we see T3, T4 in very, very low ranges and we see TSH really high, that's where we get hypothyroidism from, right? Because your body is trying to get your thyroid to function and your thyroid is just not functioning. Um, you also can get things like really high TPO, really high TSH, and really low T3, T4. That is a sign of Hashimoto's or some kind of autoimmune issue because there's antibodies, the TPO, that is that are being produced when it comes to the function of your thyroid, right? So there's two things right there. And then we get into other things like environmental hypothyroidism, where your TSH is at range, but T3 and T4 are really low. Like your, your thyroid is just not producing. There's something going on there. Um, at a cellular level or environmental level, inflammatory level, that's just getting in the way. There's also something known as hy cellular hypothyroidism. And cellular hypothyroidism is where your thyroid blood markers look great, but due to inflammation around cell membranes, this could be due to insulin resistance. Um, this could be due to parasites, mold toxicity, um, all kinds of things. The T3 isn't entering in the cell and helping with the Krebs cycle. So your ATP is lower, your metabolic rate is lower, your tired, you have all the signs of hypothyroidism, but your blood markers look fine. So just off of that ramble right there, you can see how complicated the thyroid hormone, the, the thyroid gland is. There's a lot we know. There's a lot we don't know. Um, like I said, you know, I've said in pre previously, uh, I'm not a thyroid specialist. I'm a metabolic specialist. So this comes into play, but it's not like my specific focus, but even thyroid specialists will tell you there's just there's some things that we don't know about this hormone. And so just under or this gland. So just understanding that there's a lot of nuance here um, is really, really important. So let's just kind of a quick overview of some like, like how that works, right? So TSH is super low and T3 and T4 really high. That's hyperthyroidism. 
that's how we're able to look at blood markers and kind of give you an idea of like what's going on with your body and where it's at. And that's kind of how those things relate, right? So your pituitary gland produces stimulating hormones that stimulate your glands, specifically in this conversation, your thyroid to produce thyroid hormones that impact your cells, that impact a body temperature, that impact metabolic rate and metabolic health, and that overall impact your um, endocrine system. One reason I'm, I'm recording this on Zoom is because I'm going to be screen sharing with you guys a little bit here. So if we go to, let me see, if, let me find the right one here. Um, so when we're looking at like this study, this is done on effective thyroid hormone derangements on sexual function on men and women. But I want to look at the women and specifically here because now granted, take this with a grain of salt, right? Again, there's a lot we don't know. And there have been studies that are conflicting on this. But prior work, right? So prior work has demonstrated a relationship between thyroid anti autoantibodies and sexual dysfunction in women. So like Hashimoto's, things like that. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean direct, right? So Hashimoto's can just make you tired, feel bad, make you feel sick. Therefore, your sexual desire is down, your libido is down. But there is an interchangeable relationship between your T3, T4, your TSH, and your progesterone and estrogen levels. They do play off each other. I've seen this in clients I've worked with. In fact, uh, one of my clients, Neely, some of y'all know her, y'all found me through her. You can go look back and you can see how her thyroid was hyper and her progesterone and estrogen were out of flux. And then the most recent video, she's posted it already. She hasn't, go watch it. She might post it after this video. Um, you'll see a surprise there, right? So you'll see how those things are connected and they're actually inter interplaying on each other. It's just realizing that there is an impact there. Now, whether it's super direct or indirect, we don't have an exact answer for that right now. There's a lot of theory, there's a lot of correlation, but it's really hard to say exact causation, right? And so there's some there's some nuance and some bio-individuality that we have to understand, but just understand that, that there is a relationship there. Whether it's well understood or not, doesn't change the fact that there is a relationship there at some degree. Is there something to keep in mind, right? If your thyroid's not functioning well and other things aren't functioning well, right? You might see that you have a sexual hormone imbalance and you might find out that, oh, wait, it's my thyroid. You regulate your thyroid. That might be what we call the root cause, okay? And so that's kind of like how the thyroid system can play on the other parts of your endocrine system, okay? So when we're looking at a ketogenic diet, which is something that we all love and promote, carnivore diet, all that stuff, we do see when people are struggling with uh, dysregulated thyroid at times due to environment or insulin resistance, we see the ketogenic diet being super effective. In fact, there's a really, really cool study um, done to help with this. Just so y'all know that I'm not all about carbs here, but it looked at um, a high carb, low fat versus a high fat, low carb diet. And what's in, so both dietary interventions, because they controlled for calories, both dietary inter interventions resulted in significant body mass, but the three weeks of sustained ketosis resulted in greater loss of body mass than the high carb, low fat diet. So this just means because there's an upregulation in metabolism when you start using ketones and fatty acids, there, there's other studies that, that um, reinforce this. And so just understanding that like the ketogenic diet can be good for somebody with some thyroid dysfunction due to insulin resistance and, um, and things like that. So I think something just to go back to that, that term we just used earlier, root cause, it's really important to identify the root cause of your issues before you jump from one thing to another. Because now we're about to shift a little bit, right? So we understand that based off studies have been reinforced, the metabolic rate up, up increases when you're on a ketogenic low carb diet. And so if you do have some thyroid issues or some insulin resistant issues, uh, we see a benefit from a ketogenic low carb diet. That is very, very true. However, something that you will see, because it's just true, is that the keto diet may not be good for some hypothyroidism. And in fact, something that I've seen in my work is actually ketogenic diet induced hypothyroidism. And we're gonna go into why that can happen here in a second. But realize that thyroid hormones play a significant role in glucose metabolism, okay? Um, and so like the ability to use glucose, metabolism in general, T3, um, works with NAD, which is at the beginning of your Krebs cycle to create ATP. In layman's terms, thyroid impacts your, your cell's ability to create energy, which is how you burn lipids to begin with, okay? Now, understand this key point right here. Too little insulin can impair the liver's ability to convert inactive thyroid T4 to active form T3. And so insulin is a big trigger for that. Now, 
the problem is, is that when we're on a ketogenic carnivore diet for too long, insulin can be really, really like too low. Like we, we have this idea that insulin itself is a bad hormone. It's not necessarily a bad hormone. Okay. It, the poison is in the dosage. Really important to understand. When you are insulin resistant, getting that insulin down is absolutely paramount hands down, which is why we see such benefit when we're insulin resistant on a standard American diet and we go to a ketogenic diet. But for some women, because cortisol also plays a role in the suppression of thyroid hormone, which is which is another key point here, because I talk about this in all my women's health videos, all my women's health playlists, you can go watch that. And I talk about cortisol being a suppression for sex hormone systems and stuff, but it also can impact the thyroid as well. And so when you have women that have moderate to lower thyroid levels in range still, when they go on a ketogenic diet, that insulin can be too low for too long, cortisol can get too high and suppress thyroid production even more. And this creates a hypothyroid um, environment. Now, there is this term of thyroid sensitivity that's been going around the past couple of years. I'm not convinced of that. Um, I think that it's just a downregulation of thyroid. And for some people, they stay within range and it's not a big deal. For others, it's it's a big deal. Because somebody will tell them, oh, well, you're just more sensitive to your T3, but like they're experiencing hypothyroidism symptoms. Um, their blood markers are obviously in hypothyroid range. And this was caused after being on a long-term ketogenic carnivore diet. And so again, good at first, but long-term, it might not be the answer long-term for you. And so understanding that, that insulin is important for the conversion of T4 to T3, and that's why this can go bad sometimes. You notice I use the word sometimes a lot. It's an important word, sometimes, because the individual matters. So let's take a look at how carbs, because now we're going to get, in, okay, well, what do you do, right? So the ketogenic diet, well, okay, so for some women, this is where I've seen carb cycling have a direct impact on their hypothyroidism, putting them back into regular thyroid function while still keeping ketones high, still keeping fat burning high. And you're not eating 300 grams of carbs a, a, a day. You're eating 100 grams a couple times a week. And it's just giving that enough insulin to your body to help with that conversion. Okay. It's not a bad thing. So understanding the way the thyroid, this is a great study. I'm going to link this study this review into the notes on my YouTube channel, because I want you to come take a look at it because this breaks down the thyroid function in a really, really great way. Just understanding that it's, it's more complex than you think it is. And again, there's a lot that we don't know, but this chart does a great job of understanding, right? So the liver helps with the conversion of T3, T4 here. We see that, right? That enters into the system and overall creates ADP and energy expenditure, right? And the muscle, things like that. We have the watt, we have the lipids here. Um, and then insulin is help what helps trigger this conversion right here, which ultimately helps with overall energy production. Okay. So it starts up here and moves its way down here and we get the finished product of burning fat. Thyroid has a huge impact on metabolism. Okay. And so realizing that carbohydrates can play a role in benefiting someone that has a dysregulated thyroid. Okay. So you really have to think about this in layers, just like a quick, like overview here. Cause I, again, I know I'm talking a lot and, and, and quickly, but it's because there's just so much information and there's no way we could put this all in one video. I would love to do a workshop on this. If y'all would want to see like a, like a free workshop on this, I would love to schedule something like that. Let me know. And I might, I might do like a quick, like metabolic health for women summit. I think that would be kind of cool. We can go through the endocrine system. We can go through like the sex hormone system, stress hormone system, thyroid. I mean, we can knock it all out in a day. Um, might be fun. I might even bring some guests on who knows we'll see. Uh, and so just realizing, okay, identifying root cause, we're going to go back to that word really matters. If you are on a standard American diet and you have thyroid dysregulation and you are insulin resistant, the best thing you can do is fix the insulin resistance. Now, technically dieting in general, regardless of the diet can help with insulin resistance because you're using less insulin because you're eating less food. Uh, you know, probably encourages less snacking, things like that. But we know that a ketogenic low carb diet, not just from a caloric standpoint, but just it's so much less insulin 
and so much less blood sugar coming into you exogenously, meaning from the outside, uh, that it helps with that insulin resistance and overall can re-regulate your thyroid. So if you're in that position, that is the answer. That is the switch you want to make. However, if you've been on a ketogenic carnivore diet for a long time and you're noticing hypothyroid symptoms, um, or you're noticing just complete endocrine dysregulation, carbohydrates can be an answer in targeted amounts back into your diet. You can do this through a couple of ways. I also talk about this on my phase three of Keto for Women on my women's playlist. We talk about things like CKD, which is a cyclical ketogenic diet, a targeted ketogenic diet, et cetera. Now, some may argue you can add in protein. Literally, here's another video for that. I talked about the difference between protein and carbs when it comes to ready to get insulin and some of the pros and cons of trying to use protein for the sake of avoiding carbohydrates or saying they're not needed and how that can not necessarily be the answer for you. Fat can also help with calories and overall health. However, how much fat do you need to eat in order to create that balance? Are you going to put on 30, 40 pounds of body fat? Some people, because they're so against carbs, might say, well, that's where your body naturally needs to be. I don't agree with that. I think that's a cop-out because they just don't want to say the words, you may need some carbs. I'd much rather someone be at a healthier, more balanced body fat percentage and lower healthy lean weight for a woman in general, right? Because women tend to have more body fat than men at a healthy range, which is totally normal and fine. Uh, but I'd rather you be that in a healthy range, having an extra 50 grams of carbs three times a week then adding in 100 grams of fat daily, gaining 20 pounds and not being happy in your body. And you know, you know, it's unnecessary body fat. And sometimes the coach does too, but but it's just that comes back to like, you never need carbs ever. Well, some women do, and and some men too, depending, depending on their activity level and things like that. So it's just really understanding that nuance about the thyroid. Again, it's a very complex conversation, but I know people wanted me to talk about this, so I hope this gives you some insight. Again, this might raise more questions than answers for you. I'd be happy to talk with you about it more. There's so many good doctors and influencers that talk about this, right? Like Dr. Boz, Dr. Mindy Pels, Daniel Hamilton, the Keto Nutritionist, Temple, um, all Ben Azadi, they have all talked about these negative four-minute curves, these negative stressors that sometimes adding some carbs in can really help you re-regulate your system and increase fat burning overall. So... I hope this gives you some direction. I hope it gives you some answers. Again, if you have questions, put them in the comment section below. I love you guys. I love this channel has grown so much and, and I appreciate your enthusiasm about being empowered and learning about your health. And I love, I'm, I'm humbled as someone that lives vicariously through what I specialize in to be able to share this with you and empower you and see you walk in freedom. So I love you guys and I will see y'all in the next video.